Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreya Crochet. So in today's video, I am going to be making some slippers. One of you guys requested that I make some slippers. And I actually found this really cool pattern, this really cool tutorial by, I think her name is Serene. Maybe her channel is Serene's Crochet or something like that. But it's a really cool pattern that I thought would be good for you guys. Of course, you guys know I'm going to, you know, add my own little touch or spin to it. Uh, because that's just who I am and what I do <laughs> but uh, no this pattern will be heavily influenced by her pattern uh, because hey when you come across great things they don't really need to be changed too much of course I'm going to you know explain things in my way and hopefully that'll be the difference or one of the differences between my video and her video not that she doesn't explain things amazingly well because she does but yeah anyway moving on <laughs> So, uh, things you will need include some yarn, obviously. I think in her video she used 100% acrylic yarn. I'm going to be using 100% cotton yarn. This is the type of yarn that you will find a lot of dish rags or dish cloths made from. Um, but I think it'll work well with slippers as well. And let's see, I think, I think, obviously it depends on the size of the foot of the person that you're making the slippers for. But I think one ball uh, could be enough. For me, since I'm going to have two colors in my slippers, obviously I need at least two balls. You will also need a pair of scissors. You will need a darning weaving tapestry needle. Okay. You're going to need a tape measure. And you're going to need a crochet hook. Now this yarn, which is a medium four, calls for size H5 millimeter. And that is US crochet hook. Okay. So I think that's all you need to know. Let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is measure the length of the foot of the person that you're making the slipper for, okay? For me, for the person that I'm making this for, I think their feet are like maybe 10, 10 inches, 9 and a half, 10 inches, okay? Once you have that number, you need to create the number of chains that will get you to that length. So we'll tie a slip knot. And depending on your tension, it might be different for you, right? Um, but it's going to be 34 for me. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30. 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, and now we're going to put one double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, okay? So count back four chains, one, two, three, four. We'll put a double crochet in that chain. I'm sorry, did I say double? I meant half double crochet. So yarn over, enter the stitch, yarn over, and that's where I'm at now, and then we're gonna pull all the way through. Pull all through the loop. So do one more, yarn over, end of the next chain like that yarn over pull through to the front for three loops yarn over go through everything one two three okay i'll do one more yarn over enter the chain yarn over pull through to the front and i'll go through them individually go through everything yarn over go through one two and three okay continue to put one half double crochet in every chain across and i'll meet you at the other end so i've made it across and counting these three chains that were left by crocheting into the fourth chain from the hook when the hook was there counting that as one stitch I have 32 stitches so I have 31 actual double crochets plus that chain three which is counting as a half double crochet so I have a total of 32 stitches for row one now I'm going to do this for several more rows so I'm going to chain two one two and when I say I'm going to do this I'm going to do what I'm doing right now what I'm about to show you. Okay, so I chain two, turn my work. This chain two counts for the first half double crochet, or technically the last half double crochet at the end of row one. We're going to start with the back post half double crochet. So yarn over. Okay, we're going from the back just out on that side. So yarn over, come from the back. Okay, come out on the right side of that half double crochet. 
around it and back out to the back. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull my loop through like that for three loops. Okay, one, two, three. Yarn over and then I'm going to go through everything. One, two, and three. Okay, and that's my back post half double crochet. Now I'm going to alternate that with the front post half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over. Here's the next half double crochet, the next stitch. So from the front to the back, back out to the front, just on the other side of the stitch. We might yarn forward, yarn over, pull through for three loops. One, two, and three. Yarn over, go through everything. One, two, and three. All right, I'm going to give you a closer view and go through one more time. So yarn over. Now it's time for the back post. Here's the next stitch. Come from the back, just on the right side of the stitch, out to the front like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go back out to the back just on the other side of that half double crochet like that. I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to pull my yarn through for three loops. Okay. One, two, three. Now I'm going to yarn over and go through everything. One, two, and three. Okay. One more front post half double crochet. Yarn over from the front on the right side of the half double crochet out to the back. Bring it back around out to the front just on the other side of the half double crochet. Bring my yarn forward so I can yarn over and then I'm going to pull through for three loops. Yarn over, go through everything. Okay. So I'm going to continue to alternate between back post half double crochet and front post half double crochet and I'll see you at the end of row two. All right, so I have two more stitches. I have this chain three on the end and then I have this half double crochet there. So I'm going to end here with this next stitch with the front post half double crochet. Like that. And then on the end where that chain three is, just put a regular half double crochet in the top chain, okay? You're always going to put a regular half double crochet at the end because you'll be crocheting into chain stitches, okay? Like that. All right, and there you have it, okay? So that's row two. I'm going to chain two, one, two. I told you you're going to do that for several more rows. Turn your work and match the stitches, okay? So looking at this, this is a back post double crochet. It's sitting in back. So I'm going to put a back post double crochet in it. So start with a back post double crochet or a half double crochet. I keep saying double crochet. I'm used to making front posts and back post double crochets, not half double crochets. But anyway, okay, here's the next stitch. From this perspective, it's a front post. So I'm going to put a front post half double crochet. So like that. So basically, I'm just going to match the stitches. Technically, if you look at the other side, you're doing the opposite type of stitch but if your perspective is from the same side then look at how it appears to you and then match that stitch so for me this next stitch is sitting in back in the previous row that stitch right there was a front post half double crochet so that means that I need to put a back post half double crochet in it okay but from this perspective it looks like a back post double crochet so I'm going to put a back post double crochet so whatever way is easier easiest for you to think about it to make sure that you're crocheting uh, the way you should be choose that way okay this is in the front these stitches are protruding out here so that means I'm gonna use a stitch that also protrudes out what stitch is that ah that's the front post half double crochet so I'm gonna go from the front around to the back and back out to the front yarn over and pull through okay so we're just starting row three okay we're gonna crochet rows four through nine exactly just like this okay alternating between the back post half double crochet and the front post half double crochet all right I will see you once we get to row 10 you got this so it is time to change yarn color okay so I've completed my nine rows okay and now I'm starting row 10 with a new color and I'm going to crochet row 10 and row 11 with this new color and then I'm going to switch back to 
the current color that I have right here, this beautiful blue, okay? So you're going to do the exact same thing that I'm about to show you to switch back to this color, okay? All right, so you have the loop. You hook it on the new color, pull through like that, and then you're going to pull on the blue. Make sure this darker blue is there's a long enough tail okay so pull on the blue to make that loop disappear like that okay and you can put the tail down like that okay and now we are going to chain two like normal one two we're going to leave this blue connected because we are going to come back to it as i just told you okay so i chain two I turn my work and I would say to, you know, normally I would crochet over this tail, but because I'm working front posts and back posts, it just doesn't really work as well to uh, hide the stitch or hide the tail. So it's just better to just wait and weave it in later. Okay. All right. So I've chained two and it's business as usual. I start with the back post half double crochet. So yarn over from the back, come from the front to the back over pull through three loops yarn over go through all, all three loops like that the next one is a front post and you can move the old blue tail out of the way as well just keep it off to the side out of your way from the front to the back back out to the front yarn over pull through to the front for three loops yarn over go through everything okay yarn over back post half double crochet Next stitch, front post, half double crochet. Okay, so I'm going to complete row 10, going across, then I'm going to complete row 11 in that same color, going back across, and then I am going to switch back to this blue, the original blue, and crochet two more rows, and then I will meet you there. All right, so this is what it's looking like so far. Now I'm going to switch colors again back to this navy blue and I'm going to do two more rows of that and then I'm going to switch back to the light blue and do my final two rows of that okay so you guys know how to switch colors let's get it done so as you see I got my extra four rows crocheted okay two in the darker blue and then returning to the lighter blue two more rows okay so now it's time to move on to the next part of this slipper so at this point i'm going to crochet on only half of it along half of it still going up still going in the same direction but i'm only crocheting on half of this so i need to know what's the halfway point well for me for the size that i'm making i have 32 stitches per row that means i'm going to crochet in only 16 of those 32 stitches so you need to figure out how many stitches you have, divide that into, and then starting from the edge, that's how many stitches across you're gonna crochet into. I think before moving on to that next part, I'm gonna show you how to weave in your tails, just in case you don't know or you've forgotten. So take your darning weaving tapestry needle, feed the yarn through the eye of the needle. And when you're weaving in, be sure to only weave in through the same color yarn that you're working with. So in this case, it's navy blue. I'm working with navy blue yarn. So I'm weaving through the stitches that are navy blue in one direction. And then I'm taking a slightly different path going through different stitches going back in the other direction. And I like to go out the side. It's just my personal preference. All right, and then you cut that down without cutting your work. Okay. All right. Next step. So picking up right where we left off, we ended over here and I already weaved in that tail so you can't really see, but I'm going to just go in the top of the half double crochet that I made into the top chain of that chain two on the end. All right. And I'm going to hook my yarn on like that. I'm going to hold that tail and I'm going to chain two, one, two. This row is just like every other row, except you're only crocheting into the first 16 stitches in my case, because my row has a total of 32 stitches, so the half waypoint, okay? This chain two counts as the first stitch, so that's one. Then I start the normal pattern, 
like always, with my back post half double crochet, that's two. Then my front post, half double crochet. It's a little tight in here. Just take your time. That's three, okay, and so on. So I'll meet you once I get to my halfway point. As you can see, I've reached my halfway point. I've crocheted my 16 stitches across. So now I'm gonna act like I'm at the end of the row. I'm gonna chain two, and I'm gonna turn my work. And now I'm gonna start my row two, okay? And I'll start it like normal, okay? Matching the stitch or doing the opposite of what you did the previous row, okay? So for me, I'll put a back post in there, and I'm putting a front post here, putting a back post there, putting a front post there, and so on and so forth across. And then you might be wondering, what if you had gone over one more stitch and then you chain two and you're working to this? In that case, you would put a front post half double crochet instead of that back post half double crochet, okay? Remember, you always want to keep that line going straight up. You want to match the stitches basically. And once again, from your perspective, it could be, if you look at it as doing the same thing, matching the stitches on the same side that you're viewing them, or doing the opposite of what you did in the previous row above that stitch, okay? So right here, this looks like a back post half double crochet, but I know that that means on the other side, I did a front post half double crochet so on this side, I have to do a back post half double crochet. I know it's kind of confusing, but you'll get it. And you'll be able to very quickly see if you're not crocheting the right type of stitch because you'll lose your pattern, okay? So I'm just going to continue doing this. And I'm going to crochet, for right now, 10 rows, okay? So this is row number two. We started the row numbers uh, over because we started a new section you know so I'm gonna crochet through row 10 here and then I'm gonna stop and show you something you're gonna have to crochet more than 10 rows but I want to stop at 10 so that I can show you how to gauge how many rows you're actually gonna need and you'll be able to better see it once you have more rows crocheted okay so now chain two, turn my work, and just start working row three. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, you guys, I've gotten my 10 rows crocheted, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold this down like this, okay? So that it's like that. And you want to crochet enough rows of this, for me, the dark blue, so that it lines up with this edge. The thing that you need to remember is that this part is a little bit stretchy. So you should stretch it, fold it down, stretch it, and when you take that final measurement, like you see how far you need to go, make sure it's stretched out, okay? So I'm gonna crochet, I don't know, maybe four more rows, and then I'll check it, but I'll make sure that it's stretched out. And if this extends to here while it's stretched out, then I know that I've crocheted enough rows, okay? All right, well, that is going to be that, so I'm just gonna work on this, and I'll meet you once this meets that. See you there. So I have gotten mine long enough where when I stretch it out, and I fold it over like this, it reaches the edge there, as you can see, okay? One other thing to note is that you see how this side is higher than this one, right? One way to avoid that, in this case I did it intentionally, I wanted this side to be higher, but if you don't want that, if you, when you fold it, want it to be completely lined up like that, then just crochet fewer rows. You could probably, let's look, line it up. So you could probably stop at that blue row right there. So make that blue row, that second row of blue there, your last one, and then start this side, okay? But I wanted mine to have like that higher piece on the on one side. So the next thing I wanna do is connect. I'm gonna connect this edge and this edge, and then we'll pretty much be done. 
because this doesn't um, line up I just want to make sure that the bottom that corner is lined up here and I'm going to stretch it just a little bit up here so when I connect I'm going to start here on both pieces and then I'll connect down and then connect around and down there okay and then um, oh yeah so that's one difference between mine and Serene's and then also I'm going to do something else up here which I think you guys will like as well all right let me show you how to proceed now if we had ended on this side then you could just leave a really long tail for the weaving but because we ended on this side I'm gonna cut the yarn so chain one cut the yarn and then fasten off and now I'm going to leave me some yarn that I'm going to cut and weave into my or put through my darning weaving tapestry needle okay so just cut me a long piece and then I'll fold this over like this by the way this is going to be the inside of the slipper so that is to say once we connect that and that we're gonna turn it inside out and it'll be correct but right now we're looking at the inside just FYI okay so as I said stretch this if yours is like this if there's this discrepancy stretch it out just a little bit okay the most important thing is that these corners line up and then stretch and then wherever it ends up here that's where you're gonna start weaving in the two pieces together okay so we'll grab our darning weaving tapestry needle and our yarn Just like before, we'll feed it through. Okay, you can tie a couple of knots just loose, just so it doesn't come off so easily as you're going through. Or you can knot, or you can only tie one. Okay, whatever you want. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the outside loop, okay, to the. Well, first let's go through the stitch like that. Just pull it and then once we get it small we can tie a couple of knots just to secure the yarn one two okay now I'll zoom in you guys okay so that's where I'm starting and now I'm going to go from the outside loop to the outside loop over there and then I'll just pull through like that okay see how that's like the top so take the outside loop and go across just find a corresponding stitch go in the outside loop don't go in the whole top go in the outside loop so you're splitting the heart if you will and pulling through okay outside loop to outside loop like that Okay, so continue doing that, and I'm going to meet you once I get to this corner. Okay, I'll see you there. So I made it to the corner, and I'm just going to continue working on the outside of the stitches. So one loop on this side, one loop on that side, and pulling through like that. Out, outer loop. Going through like that okay so you're going to continue doing that until you get here okay see how you have this solid color there once we get to the bottom of the solid color then we're going to do something different okay so connect these two all the way until this point and I'll meet you there so as you can see I have connected up to where the solid darker blue ends okay and that was where I asked you to stop so the reason I want you to stop is because we're going to turn this like this 
We're going to take the point and we're going to fit it right where we stopped. So to create this little triangle, okay? You see that? And now we're going to continue connecting, but we're going to connect this side, okay, first. Then we're going to take our, we're going to weave our yarn back to that center point, and then we're going to connect this side. And then we're going to weave our yarn back to the center point. So to start, I'll go in from that corner and then match it just anywhere over there going through one loop just like before and pulling it through. I know it's a lot of tails. Don't let them get tangled or mixed up and don't let it confuse you. Just move them out of your way. Okay, so now We've started connecting, okay? And now we just continue doing the same movement that we were doing before. One loop over there to one loop over there. Pull it through. Okay? Next stitch, one loop over there to one loop over there. Pull through. Next stitch, one loop over there, one loop over there, pull through. All right, continue doing that until you get here. And then I'll show you how to weave it back across so that we can stitch up this side. See you soon. So we're almost at that corner. So basically just take a loop over there and just somewhere over there to the other side, pull through like that. And then you can just kind of go through somewhere in the corner to create another loop just to make sure there's no opening. Okay? And there isn't. All right, so now that we're at that corner, I'm going to rotate it like this. And now basically we just want to get our yarn back over here so that we can start this edge and stitch up that side. So just go through like as if though you're weaving in your tails. You guys know how to do this. Go on through stitches and go back to where you started at that center and pull through. Like that. And that's an easy way to get your yarn back to where you started. Now we can stitch up this side. Okay, so just move the tails out of the way. This is why I said it might be helpful to weave in your tails before uh, because they might be in your way. This is the point <laughs> uh, that I was referring to where they might be in your way, but it's okay. So now, same thing. Find a loop over here for this one. Then the corresponding one over there for that one and pull through. Okay, and just continue doing that. It doesn't have to be precise, but the main thing is make, making sure you're only going through one loop on each side, okay? It'll get too bulky and too, it'll bunch up too much if you try to go through the whole top. The whole top of the stitches, okay? All right, so I'm gonna continue stitching up and then I'm gonna weave the yarn back to the center just like I did over here and then I'll meet you there. All right, so I stitched up that side and now I'm about to weave my yarn back across to get to where I started in that center. So I'm just gonna go through some stitches, okay? Just like I did on the other side. Just going back to the center. And just pull through. Like you're weaving in the yarn. Okay? And now you can just tie a couple of knots. So just go through some nearby stitches to kind of seal everything up, pull everything together. 
So I went there. I'm gonna go there. And that's kind of closing any holes that are in the area. All right, and now I'm gonna go through one more time and I'm gonna tie a little knot. So there. And then before I'm gonna pull my darning weaving tapestry needle through the loop so that when it gets smaller, eventually it'll create a little knot right there. Okay, now I can cut my yarn. And you can weave in all these tails if you want, or you can tie a couple of knots with nearby tails and then cut them down. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And remember, this is the inside. Okay, so when you turn it on the outside, which is what you're gonna do, this is what it'll look like. Okay. Okay, with this being higher, okay? And I really like this. But we're not done, okay? <laughs> I want to create a little border around here, okay? So, I'm going to go back to my light blue to do this. And I'm just going to start in the back. Pull my yarn through, chain one, like that, okay, and now I'm going to, make sure you don't lose that, put a single crochet around the edge, so single crochet, and I'm crocheting up now to get there, right? So just put a single crochet along the edge. You can spread them out as you want. Like that. Until we get to the top. In that corner, we'll put two single crochets. That'll get us around the corner. And now we're in the tops of the stitches. So just put one single crochet in the top of every stitch. This is very easy. Okay. All right, so I'll meet you once we get around to this side, okay? See you there. All right, we're making our round to the darker yarn now. So I'm just going to, once again, f place my single crochets how I want them to be placed, just spreading them out. Okay, you don't have to be precise. You're just trying to get this border created. So you can kind of get an idea of how I'm placing my single crochets by watching me work. <laughs> and I'm only going in along the sides, right? I'm not going down there to those other rows. Like this. Okay, and I'm almost back to where I started. I'll put one there. All right. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the initial single crochet that I made. Okay, just like that. And now we have that border. Okay. And now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create one round of reverse single crochets. So, you'll chain one, and then if you don't remember how to make a reverse single crochet, you go in the previous stitch, so kind of rotate your hook back to go into the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through for two loops, one, two, and then yarn over, go through both loops, just like you would any other single crochet. The only difference is that we're going in the other direction. So here's the next stitch. Rotate your hook back to go into the top of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, go through two. Next stitch is there. Rotate back to go into the top of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through to the front. For two loops, yarn over, go through two. Okay? We're going to do that 
uh, all the way around and I'll meet you once we get back over here see you there so I am almost back around as you can see and I just wanted to give you a little tip if you find that this opening is too wide for your foot then something that you can do is when you are making these reverse single crochets you can skip one every so often right because that will make it tighter to bring it in more so let's see so here that would be the next one but if I wanted to tighten this up I would skip that one and go into this one you see how it's kind of making it tighter already so I go there and make my reverse single crochet and then that reverse single crochet is spread over two stitches okay all right and then we're just gonna go down here and make one more All right, and then we'll into chain one, cut my yarn, fast enough. And you guys know, of course, I'm gonna weave this tail and I'll probably weave it this way since the blue is right there. All right, but this is the <laughs> finished product. So let me clean this up with these tails and then I'll finish up this video. See you soon. All right, so I am done. As you can see, I made the other slipper the reverse, meaning I, where you, there's light blue on one, I did dark blue on the other. So I reversed the colors so that they would match but still be different. Also something else that I did is, you'll notice on this side, I made it so that there was this raised part, okay? But on this side, I didn't. It's more this at the same level. And I told you how to control that just by not crocheting as many of those initial rows, maybe four less, let's say. Okay, so now you can see the difference. It looks good both ways, right? With it being more level, but I really prefer this for some reason. And then also, I really liked adding this last round of uh, reverse single crochets. It just gives you something to grip when you're putting them on and it feels good in your hands so yeah thank you uh serene i think that's your name uh, for your tutorial and um if you see this i hope you like the additions that i have made to your beautiful pattern so all right guys that is going to be it for this video but you know i'll see you in the next one in the meantime happy crocheting